Thanks everybody for coming to this session on ESXi patching and updating. I think I might know uh, what might be driving all the interest in that this year. Uh, my name's Eric Gray and I've been at VMware for going on 13 years. I've done a variety of things during that time but I'm currently focused on the ESXi lifecycle management and also VMware tools. Had a session on that yesterday. If you're interested, you can catch the recording. Standard disclaimer slide, show it real quick. I'm sure you've seen it before. This is what we're going to be talking about today. So here's our agenda. We're going to break it up into three sections to talk about your ESXi host updates. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about the pre-upgrade planning that you'll want to do before you embark on a host upgrade. And then we'll spend more time on the execution, figuring out what image you want to apply to your hosts, how you're going to get it on there. And during that segment, we'll do a demo and I'll show off some of the uh, new features that we've added to Update Manager in the latest release. And we'll wrap it up with some post upgrade considerations. So all those things that you uh, need to find time to get done after the, the heavy lifting is already finished. So hopefully this won't come as a shock to anyone in this room, but I do need to remind you that ESX 5.x is nearing end of support. And this might be one of the reasons why uh, there's so much interest in this uh, topic today. And just so everybody knows, hopefully you're making plans to get on 6. something. 6.7 update 1 was announced this week, so that's a, probably a really good choice if you're uh, needing to start planning your upgrades. Of course, the other thing that's probably driving interest in this session today is this mess that you've all had to face with the meltdown, Spectre, L1 terminal fault, and all that. So you realize that you have to be able to apply patches to your hosts and your guest operating systems and everything else in your infrastructure for that matter. Uh, so this hopefully with the information that I'm going to share today will help you get a better handle on that. And then just as a reminder, what we're talking about today really is focused on the host itself. I'm assuming you've seen all of the really great content put out by my colleagues, uh, Imad Yunus and, and the gang. And you know all about what you have to do to migrate or upgrade your VCSA. And so if, if, you, if you need a refresher on that or you don't know about what the sequence of upgrade, what the upgrade order should be in your software defined data center, and if you're using all of these products or some of them, please head over to one of these KB articles. There's one for 6.5 and one for 6.7. And you can better understand the, the order that things have to happen here th that VMware has tested. Okay, let's get right down to it. The first thing you want to do when you're thinking about upgrading your ESX hosts is to make sure that the host is going to be supported with that new version of ESXi. And it might happen if you have hosts that are a few years old and they're still running fine. You think, I just want to do an upgrade from 6.5 to 6.7. You just want to go and check the compatibility guide to make sure that your vendor and VMware uh, believe that that hardware is capable of running the next version. You might find out that it's not. If that's, if that's the case, you'll have to stay on that other version for a while. But as long as it's under support, we'll keep putting out patches for it. You won't be at a total dead end. But you don't want to jump the gun to do a major version upgrade and find out afterwards, after it succeeded, that the hardware wasn't supported. So this is just done off the website. You can find it pretty easy with Google. All right, so the next thing that I'm sure many of you know, and that is you need to make sure that the version of vCenter server that you're running is able to manage the version of ESXi that you want to upgrade to. Rule of thumb here is the vCenter version needs to be later, newer than the host or matching, okay? But once in a while, we'll put out patches to ESXi that are perfectly fine to run with a little bit older version of vCSA. So you want to just look into that 
and make sure you're not going to accidentally upgrade yourself into an unsupported configuration. Okay? And it also helps to read the release notes that we put out with ESXi. So that can help you uh, avoid any known issues. If we change something, uh, you know, like the SSL protocol or something like that, something big, we'll definitely document that. It shouldn't come as too big of a surprise if you read the release notes. Now, if you decide you do need to upgrade your vCenter or your vSphere environment in general, you also want to check and make sure that the upgrade path that you would like to do is supported. So every once in a while, and we were recently in a situation, and there was one a couple years ago, you know, at VMware we're working on multiple branches of the product at the same time. So we have the 6.0 and we have the 6.5 and 6.7. And sometimes we're developing these at the same time by different teams are being tested, okay? And so we'll release them around the same time. Now what we didn't have time to do is test an upgrade from one of those to the other one because they're both relatively new. So this is where you end up with a situation where if you just look at the version numbers, it seems like you should be able to go from this older, numerically older release to this numerically newer release, but once in a while, we get in a situation where you can't do that. So just check this out. And usually the remedy is to just wait. We'll wait for the next patch or up, update release for the destination uh, uh, version, and then that will be a supported upgrade, okay? And of course, if you're doing a, a minor update to VCSA, just as a reminder in case not everybody here has a chance to do this, you can use the vCenter server appliance management interface, also known as VAMI. Log in there and you can download the update from VMware automatically and apply it. It takes a little bit of time and then when it's done it'll reboot and it'll be on the, the desired version of vCenter. But, you know, this, this is really just trivializing all the things that you might have to go through to upgrade your uh, vCenter server environment. So don't just jump in there and do that unless you've done a little bit of your homework on that side. But we're not really going to talk about that in any more detail today. All right, so we've done our planning. We know exactly what we want to do. We believe it's a supported path and we think the uh, hardware supported and everything. So now we're ready to get into it. Let's figure out what we want to install on these ESX uh, servers. The vast majority of you are most likely using what we call custom OEM images. You get them from your server vendor such as HPE, Dell, Cisco, and this is the way to go in most cases. We work very closely with these partners to ensure that they have a combination of uh, bits that are going to work well on their machine. You can often obtain these directly from the vendor or you can download it from my VMware. It just kind of depends. Most of them are available on my VMware, so if you just want to go there, do some searching, you can usually find it. Now I just want to take a moment and point out that these OEM custom images are not some kind of uh, proprietary fork of the ESXi hypervisor, okay? These are merely the base VMware ESXi image that VMware creates with additional drivers called VIBs. That's the, the packaging in ESXi. So the OEMs add some VIBs there to support their I.O. devices to uh, improve the manageability of that particular server. Okay? So these are not, you're not locked into to some proprietary thing when you use the OEM images. And so th for this reason, it's perfectly fine and is actually the recommended way to go, you can patch those OEM de image deployments with Update Manager. And we'll be talking about that more in a minute. But I just want to make sure everybody knows that just because you deployed the Cisco image on your hardware doesn't mean you have to wait for Cisco to put out an updated image, okay? You can use Update Manager, download the latest release from VMware that we put out a couple weeks ago, apply it on top of there, and everything will be fine. The other thing you can do, if you want to create custom ESXi images, which is a very popular pastime for many of you, I'm sure, who loves the image builder commandlets? Oh yeah, power CLI. You can use those OEM images 
as a basis for your own custom image. And this is a really good way to do it. So that way you don't have to mess around with trying to obtain all of the individual drivers for your particular hardware. You just start with the HPE image and then you add the latest VMware patch and maybe some other third party driver to support one of your devices that you need. Create an image out of that, all that and you're ready to go. You can then install or uh, upgrade, update. Now if you're going to do that, keep in mind you don't want the ISO file. You want the offline bundle. That's a zip file. Okay. Identical contents, they're just two different delivery vehicles depending on your workflow. So if you're going to make your own custom image, you want to start with the zip file. And we're not going to go into the details on that. I've covered it in other sessions in the past. So if you want more information, you can also check out the vSphere blog where I've written about that. Now the basic procedure to install, deploy or upgrade, update your hosts. I'm sure many people get started with the ISO image. You boot off of a virtual image off of your ILO or iDRAC or whatever. And you know that, that's probably how we all got started, right? But that doesn't really scale. So this is not the best way to go when it comes to doing upgrades. A little bit more sophisticated method would be to use the ESX CLI. Now in the ESX CLI case you'll again use that zip bundle that I was just talking about. So if you create your own custom image you'll want to export it as a zip and not as an ISO. And you can use ESX CLI. This is um, I know many large customers are doing this. They've created their own orchestration uh, framework to do host upgrades using the CLI. And it does work. And I'll give you a heads up. We recently improved that uh, in 6.7 update 1. ESX CLI will do a little bit more pre-checking before it uh, runs that upgrade. So that's good. But really if you're doing this, you're sort of reinventing the wheel. You know, you're responsible as, a, as the administrator for putting the host into maintenance mode, make sure it evacuates, doing the update, rebooting the host, bringing it out of maintenance mode. You know, that, this is what we have update manager for. So really update manager is the best way to keep your infrastructure up to date. Update manager, most of you probably know what it is, but just as a quick review, this is part of the VCSA now. It can download patches right from uh, VMware. By default, that's what it's going to do. Actually, it downloads the metadata, and then depending on what you need to do with it, it'll download the patches uh, on demand. If you're in an air gap environment where your vCenter server doesn't have access to the internet, which is uh, somewhat common, especially in uh, more regulated environments. In that case, we have something called Update Manager Download Service, UMDS. So this acts as a proxy that can communicate with VMware.com, download the patches, and then you can expose that over HTTP or uh, through copying uh, to your local environment. And I'll, I'll, in a moment, I'll also talk to you about another alternative to using UMDS. But here's another heads up about an enhancement to UMDS that we're doing in 6.7 update 1, which we announced this week. And that is we are removing the requirement for a database. So if you want to use UMDS, you no longer have to set up a SQL Server database or a Postgres database if you're on uh, Linux. It's just a really quick install now. The uh, engineers realized that they really didn't need a full fledged database to make this thing work, so they just used some internal storage for that. So that's nice. And also there, there is a Linux version as of a couple releases ago now. So you don't even have to run it on Windows anymore. This is so UMDS is pretty good if you want to uh, invest in that. So after you've downloaded the patches to update manager, what you do as an administrator is you create a baseline and you can do that using the GUI or you can use power CLI depending on you know how many you have to do and how you want to automate it. And then you go through and you uh, remediate the clusters according to that baseline. So that's in a nutshell how update manager works. Usually works great. Sometimes we run into a snag if we're going to be completely honest. Sometimes a host won't go into maintenance mode for some reason and you, you kick this thing off at night. You come back in the morning and you find out only four hosts in your cluster got updated because there was some VM that was pinned to a host or something that couldn't migrate off of there. These things happen so just be aware of that. Uh, but we do try to make improvements in each release to make it more reliable. So 
it's a good reason to, to stay up to date on your vCenter server. You get the latest version of VUM along with that. Now let's talk about what VUM specifically is capable of doing. Sometimes there's a little bit of confusion here uh, among users and frankly even among people within VMware. So using as an example the latest release of Update Manager, that's 6.7, it's capable of managing updates for all of the versions of hosts that are manageable by that version of vCenter. So those are the ones that are listed on the screen here. You can do 6.7 of course, 6.5 and also 6.0. So what types of remediation can you do? Of course if you have a 6.7 cluster you can apply a patch to it. That's, that's perfectly obvious. If you have a 6.5 cluster, which is a common situation, you've updated your vCenter environment and you know your, your hosts are not yet upgraded but you want to keep them up to date, keep them secure, you can patch 6.5 with 6.5 patches. You do not have to upgrade to 6.7. So you can keep your hosts on 6.5 if you need to do that. Or you can upgrade to 6.7. So there's two different workflows here and I'm going to demonstrate both of these in a demo here shortly. But what about 6.0? Well again if you have some 6.0 hosts, maybe they aren't able to go up to the next version, uh, that's fine. They're still going to run uh, just great. We still put out patches for it, it's still supported and you can still apply those patches to the 6.0 host using Update Manager. Perfect. But what about upgrades? This is the main point of confusion. You can only upgrade to the current version, the matching version of ESXi. So in the example here, you can only upgrade to 6.7. You cannot upgrade from 6.0 to 6.5 if you're using VUM 6.7. Okay? So hopefully that is clear. Now let me talk a moment about that upgrade workflow. In VUM, you'll actually use an ISO image to do the major version upgrades. So you can use one of those custom ISO images that you got from your favorite server OEM or you can create your own using Image Builder and then you upload that ISO image into Update Manager. And then what Update Manager does is it pushes the content of that ISO image out to the host during remediation. It tells the host to reboot. VUM actually creates a small kickstart file, you don't see this, it's happening under the hood, to do an automatic unattended upgrade as part of that bundle that gets pushed out there. It reboots the host, it comes up, it goes through that unattended upgrade automatically, finishes the upgrade after a few minutes and then reboots again, right? So that's two reboots to do an upgrade using Update Manager. This is not always obvious because you're probably not sitting there watching the console to see what's happening here. You just know that that upgrade took a long time. Well, you know, booting modern server hardware takes time because you have half a terabyte of RAM in there sometimes or more. You have a lot of devices, they have to initialize. It takes a number of minutes to boot the server. So here you are, you're doing it twice. So we realize this is a problem and it is affecting your maintenance windows. So we made a great improvement in vSphere 6.7 update manager and now what we call, this is what we call single reboot upgrades. If you're going from 6.5 to 6.7, we don't do what I just described. Our smart update manager engineers figured out a way to go ahead and do the upgrade immediately and then at the end of that, reboot into 6.7 and then come out of maintenance mode and you're done. So that can shave quite a few minutes off of your host upgrade time. When you multiply that times the number of hosts in your cluster and you're in your environment, this can really add up. If you're going from 6.0 to 6.7, you'll still have the two reboot uh, workflow because it's just not uh, backported back to that older release. In 6.7, we release the initial version of the Update Manager HTML5 client. So this is great. It's all part of our uh, plan to migrate off of the Flex client and onto HTML5. So this version is not 100% feature complete, 
but it does do most of the day-to-day -day tasks that you would need. You can create baselines, attach them to cl clusters, you can do uh, compliance checks, you can do remediation, and so on. There's a few things you have to jump back over to the Flex client for, but as of update one, which we announced this week, we have an enhanced version of the VUM client, and we're, we've finished essentially addressing all of those shortcomings, and so now if you're on update one, you should have a very full featured client. I'm just showing you on the screen some of the tabs. It probably looks familiar, even if you've never seen this before, but you've used update manager in previous releases, you probably recognize what's happening here. In general, the concepts are the same, but, but certain things have changed. Well, one thing that's different is the remediation process. So what you see here is I'm at a cluster level. We've decoupled the, the pre-check from the remediation wizard, okay? So as you can see on the screen there on the far right, this is a, you can run the pre-check remediation before you begin actually doing the remediation. And that'll give you a heads up as far as is DRS enabled, are there any VMs with media attached that are gonna prevent them from migrating, and things like that. So we're trying to make the workflows a little bit more streamlined. When VMware puts out a patch, it is usually in the form of a number of bulletins, we call them. A bulletin is a grouping of VIBs that are grouped together to satisfy dependencies. So typically what you'll see is ESX base, vSAN, vSAN health as one unit that'll come out as a bulletin. And depending on the magnitude of the patch, there could be a number of bulletins. Now there's a side effect here, and that is if you are to patch your host with, let's say we release a patch, it has this bulletin that I just described, you apply it to your hosts, you think you're on the latest version of ESXi, but you're not actually. You're on the latest version of those particular packages, but there's several dozen other packages on the host that did not get updated. Now if you use Update Manager and you use the default dynamic baselines to always install everything, that's how you can stay on the latest version of everything. Uh, but that's a little bit of trouble and most customers don't want to always install all that stuff. So what I want to tell you about right now is a, is a small but very significant enhancement that we introduced just a couple months ago and that is the addition of some new metadata with every patch release. This new metadata is what we call a roll-up. This roll-up bulletin includes every single package that makes up the ESXi system. So now, when we put out a patch, we still have the bulletins that you're used to seeing. There could be one or three or five bulletins with a patch release just depending. But we always have this extra bulletin and it'll show up in VUM just like you see on the screen there. It has a slightly different name. It doesn't have that dash and then the letter codes at the end. And you see the type is listed as a roll-up. You may know roll-ups from updates. When we do 6.5 update one, update two, those are roll-ups, okay? But in general, we, don't, we haven't released a lot of roll-ups. Now we're gonna release a roll-up every time, every time we patch. So the benefit here is if you've skipped a few patches, all you have to do when you do decide to patch is put that roll-up bulletin in your baseline and your host will be on the latest, most current version of every single VIB without you having to go through and specify it manually. And the other benefit here is if you're in an air gap environment where you're manually importing patches into Update Manager, this way you only need to import one file. Get the latest file from VMware, you go download it from my VMware, and you can see on the screen there, I'm sure everybody's seen this, uh, patch release has the bulletins listed, and each bulletin has a dedicated KB article. It sort of acts as the release note so you know exactly what's fixed in there. You only need to get the latest file, upload it in there, and you'll get, you'll be able to apply every single VIB to your host. Before this small change of including that roll-up bulletin, uh, you would have had to download quite a few different patches and upload them into Update Manager. 
to make sure you got all the latest versions. Okay, so that, that's a nice enhancement. I hope you can take advantage of that. vSphere 6.7, as I was explaining earlier, we, we acknowledge that uh, rebooting hosts takes time and it makes your maintenance windows long. So we actually did two things in vSphere 6.7 to reduce the downtime when you're patching and updating. The first one I already described, the single boot, single reboot updates, single reboot major version upgrades I should say. But the other thing we did is we introduced a new innovation called quick boot. Quick boot allows us to shut down ESX and restart ESX without rebooting the underlying hardware. So as I mentioned earlier, rebooting the hardware takes time. You can now avoid all of that memory testing, physical device initialization and all those tasks because we just don't do it. We'll shut down ESX and boot up the, the new version of ESX all without rebooting the host. So I'm going to show you a very quick micro demo of this in action. And just to set the stage, I have two Dell servers. They're both running 6.7 GA and I've decided that I want to install a, an extension. This is the EMC VAI uh, NAS extension and it happens to require a reboot at the end of installation. So even if you're not installing a VMware patch, you can still benefit from quick boot. It's just any time update manager needs to reboot a host, it can use quick boot if the host is compatible. Okay, so what I'm going to show you on the screen is really just the good part because it would be, you know, several minutes to try to watch the whole thing. Uh, but you're going to see that I've triggered this update on the two hosts simultaneously and now they are beginning that restart process. So the host on the right is going all the way back down, initializing, you know, post or power on self test. The host on the left shut down ESX, started it back up, it's done. Host on the right is still loading the ESX vibs off of the disk. The one on the left is already done. So again, you can shave a number of minutes off of your patching time now with this new feature called quick boot. We support a couple different generations of Dell, Dell EMC and um, HPE hardware and our other partners are also uh, in the process of testing and certifying for this feature. One thing that is required here just as an aside is native drivers. In recent releases we've switched over from the VM kernel uh, Linux compatibility drivers to native drivers and these are a requirement. This is the way we can make sure we're cleanly unloading them uh, so that we can do this process. All right, so now I want to get to another more interactive demo. And just to set the stage, I'm going to show you an environment that has two clusters. This is a vSphere 6.7 GA environment but I'm managing some older clusters. One cluster has 6.5 U1G and we want to get that up to 6.5 U2B. And the other one is on 6.5 and we're going to put it on 6.7 GA. So we have, a, we have an update and we have an upgrade. Okay. Now the thing about that first one is we're really going to benefit from that new feature that I just told you about with the update uh, roll ups. Okay. Because you notice we're, we're on U1 something and we're going to go to something past U2. We don't have to go to U2 first and then apply U the U2G on top of that. We're going to be able to do this all in one shot using one single zip bundle that we're uploading to this environment. Because in this environment we don't have internet access. So we're not able to download all the patches on demand from VMware. Okay, so this is our goal. Our goal is to get all the hosts, the two different clusters on the desired build numbers, okay. Build numbers are usually the, the way that we all talk about the exact version of ESX that we're running, okay? And this is just power CLI running uh, in the foreground there. So this is, I'm showing you the end result now. And let us cut over to my trusty laptop. Okay. So here we have the HTML5 client. And we're going to jump over to the first cluster. 
And we have a wonderful KB article. If you ever want to know exactly what version of ESX you're running or you need to obtain, this is a, a nice listing in a human readable form of the release and the build number. And so if you just Google for ESXi build number KB, you'll find it. So these are the ones that, this is how we know what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to run a power CLI to get the build numbers off of these two clusters. And I'm going to consult this KB article just to make sure that I know what I'm looking for. And then we'll proceed. Okay. So here we jump over to the new HTML5 update manager client. You know, the uh, repository is empty right now because we don't have internet access. We weren't able to download that metadata from VMware. So we've obtained this from my VMware and we're going to upload this zip file, this patch bundle into update manager. And that just takes a few moments to, to chew on that. And then as you can see, we've got this new patch release roll up. That's the one we're going to be using. And there were a couple other bulletins that were the focus of that patch. And then we're also going to prepare for that 6.7 upgrade. And to do upgrades, we use the ISO image. So we'll go ahead and upload that ISO image to Update Manager. So we have two different workflows depending on what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. And as you can see, this is the Dell EMC customized ISO that I downloaded from, uh, from the, the Dell EMC website. And we have a workflow all set up here to create a baseline right off of that image that we just uploaded. So that's convenient. So we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, give it a name. And we already know this is an upgrade because it's using the ISO, so we can't change that. Verify the image and then finish. So that's pretty simple. So now there's a baseline that contains that upgrade. But for the update, using the patch bundle, we have to go make a different baseline. So this is going to be our baseline to get to U2G, or sorry, B, from the uh, U1G. And that's a patch. By default, you can dynamically search for patches you want to include. We're going to uncheck that box and we're going to deliberately choose that roll up because we know that we just, w we want that. We don't want anything else that might happen to end up in the repository. Okay, so now we've got our two baselines all ready to go. Let's jump over to the first cluster that we're going to upgrade. And here you can see the new interface and how it works. We attach a baseline. So the top cluster, we're going to do the upgrade. We'll go ahead and get that started. Run the pre-check. So the pre-check just looks for any obvious problems that might prevent you from going into maintenance mode. Make sure DRS is enabled, et cetera. So we'll do a quick compliance check after that. And after a little bit of uh, time, we can realize that as expected, they're all out of compliance. So we go ahead and choose that baseline, hit remediate. And you can see now this remediation workflow is much more streamlined. If you've used previous versions or the, you know, the flex client of update manager, you probably have just gotten so used to clicking next, 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 even though you're not doing anything on any of those screens. So what you're about to see is the new improved user experience. We're going to really just capture the important data here. We're going to allow you to deselect some hosts if you want. And then we're going to let you review the settings, but we're not going to let you change them here because we, I think we realize that nobody ever changes these settings during this process. So let's just get a review, say okay, and let's just get this thing kicked off and on with things. So now while that's going on in the background, you can see that host is going into maintenance mode now. Let's go to the other cluster. This is the one we're just going to do a patch for. All right. So we attach that. Again, we'll do the pre-check just to make sure there's nothing unexpected, and like DRS not enabled, et cetera. Check the compliance, let that run for a moment, maybe hit refresh a couple times and then, you know, after a couple minutes, it's ready to go. And we basically are just going to do the same thing here. So now we're going to hit the remediate button. Again, we're going to have a chance to review. Just verifying that this is a roll up. It's going to get us the, onto the latest version of every VIB 
that makes up that particular ESXi release. Okay. And again, the, the workflow is much more streamlined. You just click OK and it begins. All right. So these upgrades have been running in the background. There's still one left to go. We'll jump back over to Power CLI and run that query again to see how we're looking. You can see most of the hosts in the first cluster have, have made it to the desired version. We'll run this a couple more times over a period of, I'm obviously skipping a, a couple minutes out here each time. So now uh, we can finally verify that all the hosts are on the build numbers that we care about. So that's good. So let's jump back over to the vSphere client and, uh, you know, refresh it. I'm sure you're all used to that, right? And we can see that we have compliance. Everything looks good. All right. So there you go. That's the new update manager user interface, HTML5, vSphere 6.7. We use the roll up bundle to save time, not have to upload multiple zip bundles in this air gap environment. And uh, it's really easy. Okay. So there's our goal accomplished. So now let's talk about some of the post upgrade considerations. The distributed switch is a really wonderful way to manage your networks, especially in larger environments. You don't have to go around and create port groups on every single uh, standard switch. And you may not know this, but the distributed switch has its own versioning. And so sometime after you do your host upgrade, it's a good idea to go out and finish that task. And this is done through vCenter. You, you can upgrade your virtual switch version. Now, if you're looking, it's very small, so I doubt you can see it. But if you look closely, you can see that there's a virtual switch version 6.6. .6. Wait a second. What? I thought we were on vSphere 6.7. This is just a, an under the hood uh, detail. But this is the version of virtual switch, uh, this distributed virtual switch that goes with vSphere 6.7. All right, so that, that's actually a non disruptive upgrade. You can do it while your hosts are running. Uh, but it is a good idea to export your configuration before you do that, just in case something happens uh, midway. Maybe you can get back to where you started. All right, so the next thing we might want to upgrade soon after we've moved ESXi to the new version. And this could include an update version or a major version upgrade. It doesn't have to, I'm not talking only about major version upgrades here. It could be from 6.5U1 to 6.5U2, for example. Host profiles have a version associated with them. Not everyone knows this because we don't make it very obvious. If you're looking in the host profile interface, it's not really easy to tell exactly what version of host profile you're running. It is possible. You can, you can d dig down there and find out. But essentially, just as a reminder, host profiles are created by extracting a configuration from a host. So whatever version of host you extracted that configuration from, that's the version of the host profile. Now that host profile will work with a newer version of ESXi. Obviously, otherwise if you upgraded ESXi, your profile would be, wouldn't work and that would cause all kinds of problems. So what you cannot do is try to get ahead of the game and apply a newer version of the host profile to an older host. It seems like that might work, but that's just not the way the, the forward and backward compatibility story works for host profiles. You can actually, there are ways to do it if you are very uh, creative. You can go in and find just the right combination of setting changes to, to do this. But it's not recommended and most likely when that host remediates, it's going to throw off a lot of errors. It's going to have trouble uh, getting into compliance and so it's just not recommended. So what you want to do is upgrade your host first and then, you know, depending, you can decide what your, what your workflow would look like for your cluster. But you upgrade maybe the first one, extract a profile, 
maybe attach it back there, test it out. And so then if you're happy, you can proceed upgrading. And as, as you upgrade the individual hosts, you could attach the newer profile to it. Or you could do the whole cluster first and then go back and get an updated host profile. It's really up to you depending on your environment and how you want to uh, execute that. But it's important to eventually get on the matching version of the host profile. Because with each release, we add new settings, capabilities, we resolve bugs. Sometimes there's you know, issues that we encounter that you report to us and so we fix those. But you can't benefit from those fixes unless you actually get up to that new version, okay? Now what, another one of my favorite topics, VMware tools. This is something that in general you'll want to update. Maybe not necessarily it could be really abstracted away from your ESXi upgrades, but it's something to keep in mind because each version of ESXi does come with VMware tools. So after you upgrade your hosts, you will have a newer version of the VMware tools installers available to your VMs on that host. And so it's sort of natural after an ESXi upgrade that you would want to start thinking about a tools update. Although in recent years, we've tried to decouple tools from ESXi. And we, we release them asynchronously, actually. So if you want the latest version of tools, you can just go to my VMware, download them. We have release notes with every release of tools, so you can see exactly what changes are going in there. Uh, we've very recently released VMware tools as an offline bundle. So you can upload that into Update Manager and you could actually get your VMs onto the very latest version of VMware tools using that workflow. And so that way when you update your hosts, there's noth nothing to do because you did that in advance. So this is not necessarily a dependency on ESXi. Um, and just while I'm talking about it, I'm not going to go into any great details here. But we do have a few different types of VMware tools. The ones I have been talking about for the past minute or two are the ISO tools that ship as a part of vSphere. We also, for Linux operating systems, have a couple other types of tools. And these are Linux packages that are managed from within the guest, not from vSphere. And these are recommended. So if you're running, uh, and we have two different ones, operating system specific packages and open VM tools. And the reason why we have that is more of a, a history thing and not, uh, there's not a conflict right now. If you have a newer version of Linux such as uh, Red Hat 7 or later, you'll use the open VM tools. And if you have Red Hat 6 or earlier or in around that time frame, you'll have the OSPs. The difference, just real quick, the OSPs are created by VMware. We actually compile the binary packages. We put them on packages.vmware.com. You can go download them, install them with yum or with apt or whatever, and it works great. But in recent years, we open sourced VMware tools code. We let our distribution, Linux distribution partners download that code they build their own binary packages and put them into their own repositories. And so you get access to VMware tools without doing anything extra. You install the latest Ubuntu, it's got VMware tools already in there. You don't have to go and do that extra step. So this is great. Uh, I can give you a lot more information on that uh, in the VMware tools session, which was yesterday. So it was recorded. You can review that. Um, and then, of course, the update procedures differ. If you're using the vSphere ISO tools, there's a bunch of different ways to call the tools upgrade API. You can do it interactively with the web client or Power CLI or whatever. But if you're using those uh, Linux packages, you'll do it from within the guest. Use yum, use apt, okay? And there's that banner. Gosh, everywhere I go, I see that thing. VMware tools is outdated on this virtual machine, okay. Now, we, whenever I talk about VMware tools, people start thinking about what about VMware hardware? So I just wanted to throw this in here. This is definitely a consideration after you've done an ESXi upgrade. 
But I want to make sure that it's very clear you don't have to upgrade your virtual hardware just for the sake of it. If, if you don't have a business reason to upgrade VMware, the, the virtual hardware, or also known as the VM compatibility mode, don't do it. Now, thanks to Spectre and Meltdown, we have a business reason to update the uh, virtual hardware. This is the first time I recognize that in a VMware security advisory, we actually recommended a particular version of the VM hardware. We usually don't do that. So thanks to Spectre, Meltdown, Meltdown and, and Gang, uh, we are recommending version 9 just for uh, mitigation, but version 11 hardware for best performance. And so version 11 hardware came with vSphere 6.0. Probably a lot of the VMs running in your environment are at least at that level, but you may have some older VMs. Uh, you probably want to th start thinking about your virtual hardware upgrades there. Keep in mind this is essentially swapping out the virtual motherboard on your VM. And so it's not something to take lightly. You'll definitely want to put some testing time into that if it's a critical workload. Make sure that the upgrade goes smoothly. You can take a snapshot before you do that. And, and if you have to, you can roll it back and that'll roll back the hardware version as well. The latest version of hardware is 14, shipped with 6.7. We didn't really bump up too many of the maximums in that release, but we did enable a lot of those new hardware innovations such as TPM 2.0, support for VBS, that's a Windows virtualization based security. Uh, you know, the, uh, some of the other things that you see listed on the screen, per VM enhanced vMotion compatibility. So if you need any of those new capabilities in vSphere 6.7, you want to make sure you're running the hardware from 6.7. So don't set your virtual hardware to a, an older uh, default, which you can do, because then you won't have access to those new technologies. Now licensing, some of you may be uh, getting from 5.x to 6.x and whenever we do a major, like the first number of the version number, I'm talking about major release, you'll need new license keys. If you're under support and subscription, you'll have access to those but you'll have to do the work to go to my VMware, generate them, download them, et cetera. Uh, the keys from 5.x won't work on your 6.x hosts so after you've done an upgrade, you'll find that your hosts are in evaluation mode. That's so they can run for 60 days without disruption. But if you don't notice that this is happening, you might have an unpleasant surprise later down the road. So what you want to do is prepare for that. And one way you can automate this is to use what we call bulk licensing. So if you want more details on this, you can look in the vSphere documentation, just search for the word bulk licensing, you'll get some example code like this. This is a power CLI feature. It essentially allows you to attach a license key to an object in vSphere, like a cluster would make sense. And it will automatically license any unlicensed hosts with that key. And this includes hosts that were upgraded from 5.6 from five to six, okay? So this is just a, a tip that might, might help you if you're doing that five to six migration. All right, so to wrap it up, you do need to do a little bit of planning to ensure a successful host upgrade. Watch that sequence of events. Remember that the patch releases are cumulative, but you might not always get all the, all the updates unless you keep up with them or you use this new roll-up bulletin that we uh, talked about a few times. Update manager is the best way to keep your host up to date. We've made a lot of improvements as far as embedding it into the VCSA on vSphere 6.5, the new HTML5 client in 6.7, improved reliability and scalability. So really the, give it a shot. If you haven't used it in a couple major releases, you know, take another look at it. It's a good way to keep your host up to date. And if you're using those OEM images, which I'm sure you are, please feel free to patch them with VUM, with the VMware patches. Those are completely compatible. 
And um, don't forget about some of those post upgrade tasks. All right, so I just want to remind you to fill out the survey, let us know what you felt about this session, would you like to see it again next year, things like that. But thank you very much for your time. I will uh, remain up here if you want to come up and ask any questions. Thanks a lot, everybody.